Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the quarterfinals now of the North American Relegations Week 1. Joining me is Adanis. You, you okay, man? Oh, I'm great. I'm Enjoying great. your premium account this weekend? That's what I'm doing. Well, what it is, I was kind of bought a bow tie, so I thought I'd try something different out, <laughs> so I set myself on fire. And uh, yeah, we're here to cast. We're here to cast. Uh, but G'day thank you home. all for joining us on Valentine's Day. I know uh, all you girlfriends of the gamers out there are a little uh, displeased. But so far, hey, uh, a, a great... serious business now. It, There's money involved. There is. This is, is for the Pro League. On this is for the week. potential slot in the Pro League. Uh, and we had a really great game so far. Um, a lot of these players coming out from the combine, I think. I noticed a lot in, in most of these um, teams that mm -hmm. there's a lot of players that have participated in For sure. you know, high-level ranked, really looking like they want to get involved in competitive. Body Man showed off a little bit as well. We saw Turtle Man in that game too. Let's have a look at the brackets here as well and see how things are playing out so far. We can see we're through to the quarterfinals. We've got Problem Solved up against Sir Exit. Is it? Is that Sir Exit. Sir Exit. Sports. Okay. And Exit Esports versus Swoop is what we're going to be casting for you now. We've also got Team Flex. You all know those boys there. Maddie Flex, Incon Flex, Last Flex. Known Bads. And also Squirtle Squad made it through that last game. They're now taking on Team Fake Out. Which one are you excited about there? Um, What's your predictions, at least, for semis? So my predictions for semis, I think we'll see Problem Solved move through. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure between Anixie and Swoop. Uh, we're going to find out shortly. I imagine Team Flex will make it to semis. And, you know, I, Squirtle Squad looked really good. They did. They beat Salamander Squad, which not a lot of people may know this uh, that only watch Pro League. But that's a squad that wins most of the casual uh, competitive mm -hmm. tournaments. Um, first, second, almost every single time. So, so it's a good for they're, them. They're, they're a known squad that... For them to fall that early in the round of 16 was a little bit of a surprise. And Squirtle Squad looking real good. I think we'll see them face off against Flex. But now we're going to be seeing Swoop versus Enixio and see how these two teams play out. They've got an opportunity here to try to advance themselves through to the semifinals. And, well, I'm expecting to see a lot of Amana today, a lot of Kronos today potentially. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm expecting from North America. We didn't see it really in the EU. Is there any other changes you expect today? Uh, Vamana is like this thing where... Vamana really seems like he's good, but mm -hmm. no one's fully experimented That's with true. him. A lot of the new items we've seen have uh, introduced in Season 3 have been very situational mm -hmm. and not too many new core items. It seems like the core items really shifted over to items that have been around forever with the nerf of, you know, Sovereignty and Heart Ward and, and all that and the splitting of the health and, mm -hmm. and protections. And I think Vamana, he's a pocket pick for a lot of players right now. I don't think he's going to be highlighted well, so the, I mean, far. The, bu the buff so far to him, he's got an increased movement speed as well as his yes. ultimate. He's got a bit of a bigger range on it too, so being mm -hmm. able to hit those in hands is going to help. But let's see if he gets picked up though as we go into the picks and bans for this game between Swoop and is it Anixia? Anixia. 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 And not the Anixia, not the WoW boss Anixia. That's what I was thinking. It is not. Anixia. I know. I got so excited. And Onyxia. then it's like it spells different. I'm like, Onyxia. oh, man. It's a giant dragon. There's no whelps here. Throw more dots. <laughs> yeah. Throw more they dots. like have to play Kakulkin and Al Kuang if they're actually Anixia Esports. Fire is dangerous. Anyway, Anixia Esports will have first pick. First ban this game. They'll be on the order side, as you'd expect. And where are they going to head with their first ban? Well, I'm expecting Kepri more than likely. And I think we'll we see go. some pretty meta picks. Kepri, uh, Al Athena, Al Kuang. Kuang will probably be taken out. Sol as well. And uh, I don't think Sol is really as highly... Everyone's rating is still quite high, I think, for where she should be. Uh, I, I think maybe. as teams, some of the lower-ended teams start to figure her out, we'll, uh, we'll see players not be as scared of facing Sol. And uh, I want to talk about the most important ban uh, in, in the game right through. now, Robin. Well, Al Kuang gets through. As well here with Giannis and Solban, Al Kwang's available. Athena is also available here already, Kevin. And that's what do you want to go for? Because honestly, Al Kwang probably one of the most potent junglers in Smite right now. But also Athena, uh, with the recent change to Relics, mm -hmm. where now you no longer have a 90 second beads, you have a 160 second purification relic. It's good to go Athena to really pop those on cooldown. But instead, Nixie actually elect to draft into Chiron. If I was Swoop here, I'd be looking for Athena Al Kwang as my first two picks potentially. There's a nice combination there, very similar to Athena with Loki combination because of the invisibility. Al Kwang can do the same sort of thing, but no, they're going to head over for Thor, so they're going for the safe standard pick that we saw a lot in season two. And I think Thor's got a little bit of uh, a little bit better here in season two. Uh, Isis picked up as well, and honestly, this is kind of like the snowball squad. Thor and Isis are two gods that have a lot of pressure uh, in their respective roles early. Isis can clear the wave at level one, basically. Mm -hmm. Thor clears camps very fast, has his passive, which uh, increases his power early on, depending on the number of players around him. And they have so much kill potential. And both of these gods not only have a lot of base damage in their kits, but they also both have stuns. 
On paper, Swoop looked good with the Thor Isis, but across the way, Anixia now got Athena Alquang, which is the two that I expected to be picked up by Swoop here. Same here. Now locked in. Chiron Athena Alquang. If I'm in ranked right now and I saw this, I'd be calling GG already. Let's get ready for a 10 minute This isn't ranked, though. Uh, it's true. A lot it's of it true. comes down to the completed team comps in the end, and Swoop, they're going to go Gab, and this team comp is a, a season one. This is the season one team it comp is. that we saw. It, it's always come back, and the big thing about this team comp, it's a lot of circles that even if you get behind, you can still fight into. It's, it is a entirely team-based uh, composition. Typically, you pick up a, a hard carry in the Hunter Wool and just hope that they can survive because they have a Geb. But you can make a lot of mistakes with Isis and Thor and still get damage off, which is what's important. Well, one of those hard carries taken off the table in the Hunter roll, at least with Ho Yi being taken away. Vamana Band and the Agni Band I really like there, just because it's very good in the matchup against the Isis for the stuns to stop the Wingus. Nox, though, is still going to be available here if Anixia want to look towards that sort of direction. We'll find out if they do, though, as Neath also banned away, so Hunter focus from Anixia Esports here. And I like that. They, they take away the Ho Yi, which is the other big circle Hunter. In addition, they also lock away the Neath, so if Swoop we're going for that early game pick comp where, you know, the Isis and Thor put out a ton of pressure and then Denith alts over. They take that away. But instead, Swoop going to go real old school, lock in Apollo. A god we, we don't ever really see in competitive play anymore. He just doesn't bring enough utility. And it takes him a long time to get online. I feel he's very mid-tier right now, Apollo yes. in the Hunter. If not low-tier. Uh, I don't know. I don't necessarily think he's weak. I think he's a bit, l little bit underrated right now. I think he's a little bit stronger. But someone who definitely isn't underrated is tier. Strong in the meta right now, especially with the Vamana ban there. Go ahead and over to that early. Means that Swoop don't have many options left for the solo lane. Maybe the Osiris, the Bologna available? Osiris and Bologna are both available. And I, they're pretty good against tier two. I, I think part. both of those could work in the team comp. I, I think I would prefer the Bologna. Kronos actually picked up for the bin lane, and and you said it at the start of the cast is, you know, Kronos starting to make a rise. He has a lot of magical power now to go based off of, and any god that already made use of Polynomicon mm -hmm. is now making use of it more because it got doubly buffed. Not That's only right. uh, was the percentage on the passive increased by, I think, 15 or 25%, but also the fact that there's more magical power in the game Correct. means that Polynomicon is swinging harder. And Al Kwong, another god that really makes good use of that, can go into it early as well. The one combination that we saw back in Season 2 when Al Kwong was first release and available in Pro League play oh, yeah. was Agni Alquang because Agni can set up for the stun very easily for Alquang to get in there. Kronos, very similar, can do the same sort of thing with his stun. And it is going to be the Bologna last pick in for Swoop. A very team fight oriented uh, play style here. Uh, they do have a little bit of pick potential with Isis and Thor, and I would like to see Swoop really put out the pressure early because the later this game goes, once that Kronos and Alquan get online, it's going to be very hard for them to fight into that. This feels very much like season two. Sorry, season three on the left hand side, season yes. two on the right hand Almost side. Season, I'm saying season one on the right hand side. I mean, it could go back as far as season one. But the big key here is that can you play the season two, season one meta of the right, the right hand side team here, the, or, the Chaos side team, better than the Order can with their new changes to the roster? Well, Swoop has already adapted to the Season 3 playstyle. They know Alquang's in the game, mm -hmm. and take a look at Geb's first relic. He doesn't go beads, he doesn't really go uh, shell, he picks up the meditation. This is good in two fashions. First off, even if Alquang wasn't in the game with the Execute, Meditation is very strong right now because you get the full rank 3 mm -hmm. at level 1, which means you can use it a lot more effectively in early game teamfights. But also Alquang, there's a slight delay when he uses his ultimate. That Execute... You stab your sword into someone, and then you flip them up and kill them. You've now, very during the, the animation of the sword stab, you can actually pop your meditation and get someone back over the threshold, and the execute doesn't go through. And the best thing about that is because with the Geb, they've got the Thor for initiations in the early game, which allows Geb to hit level 12 before he needs to blink yes. to be able to cataclysm in. They also have, as well, the Bologna to initiate, so they've got Thor and Bologna for initiation. Geb can sit back and peel, and it's not going to be too detrimental him having this meditation early, which he could do in certain comps. And, and I agree with you. I, I don't want to see Left Sender go aggressive at no. all. He needs to play entirely support-based. He has those initiations he needs on his team He needs the shields to remove the stun and the fearless chains as well as yes. the big one and the taunts so he should be sat on the backside for the most part of this game early game starts so far both pretty standard looks like a a, a blue buff into lane immediately how kuang and chronos gonna get hit level two and honestly the chronos is very good against isis and thor as well and you can see right there Ooh. time stop and <laughs> purification force immediately he had to because there's pressure that could come out there and burst him down even lower i mean he would have been able to sustain with a health potion potentially but he's out of potions already having to pop that already i think that was wise to do it there though but he's got to watch his positioning now i agree and, and now swoop uh can't really be aggressive um 
you can see Mollusk has no more potions in tow. He needs to all in someone because if he tries to get in a poke war against the Alcaron and Kronos, he's he's gonna lose. They have too much sustain left with their potions and kind of just their uh, base kit and. This Paul's isn't really aggressive though from the duo lane of Swoop here. Gev and Apollo out pushing an Athena and Chiron was not expecting to see that in the early stages. I'm trying to figure out what exactly happened. It looks I like think it was the early game, like just getting to lane. I, I, it was yeah, a small advantage. That's, that's what I would imagine. But you can see both teams did the three camp start, and yeah. I guess just the fact that it's an Isis uh, helped uh, Swoop get to lane a little bit faster there. Below look at this tiered. on the rotation back towards mid lane here. Looks like they're being a little bit caught out of position as Kronos is being pressured down here. Good stun onto the Mollusk, but the Wing Gus are really putting out some good damage. Can they secure the kill as Quan comes in? They will find it, and they're looking for Quang as well. Here comes the stun, Spirit Ball, Purification Forced, and how Kwan going to make him, uh, his way back into the tower? Just barely, though, but an early first blood, and honestly, it comes down to Swoop. Swoop's mechanics. Both players hit every single ability. The double tap on both the Kronos and the Al Kwong, Berserker's Barrage, Wing Gust connects as well, all four. For most part, though, it looked like Anixia didn't really choose the right idea of coming back towards the mid lane. They should have rotated around the back for safety. They walked right into the mid lane where the lane was already pushed up, and it allowed Isis and Thor, which you said are so early game focused, to get so much pressure off. This dual lane of Swoop, though, also have a lane advantage in Board control is going to be very important in Season 3. You can already see the Gab and the Apollo swing away going to try and steal that away, and they're going to grab it. It's just about 80 experience, I believe, and, and uh, a little bit of gold. And they spawn faster than the old attack speed buff, which means if you can not only get your own boars and steal away the opponents, you'll start to see some massive leads in the lane. And I think that's a big key here is lane push is going to be very important in the dual lane as time goes on. This early aggression has happened for the Apollo and Geb. They've been able to get a little bit of extra out of this as well. Meanwhile, Swoop as well, because they started those mid harpies on the right hand side, they also have some extra experience in the jungle and in the mid lane because some of the back harpies were available again for them to farm. So we see the level fives already being hit by most members of Swoop already. You can see this uh, tier of Bologna going back and forth. Uh, Bologna getting the better of this matchup early on. Thor actually takes to the sky. Looks like oh. they're looking for a gate in the mid lane. Good purification is there. Athena comes in with a blink taunt, misses it completely though. Spirit Ball, Berserker Barrage is doing good with the Wingus. Will it be enough? Yes, it will. He finds the third one out of the chain to secure it and make it 2-0 on the scholar. And that's the thing, right, is that Swoop, they have giant circles. They have giant AoEs. There's a lot of miscommunication and, and mistimed CC there, but because all of their abilities are incredibly easy to hit, the Isis was able to snipe out that Kronos as he made his way back in the tower. And right now, Oswald still only level four. Swoop have full pressure in every single lane at the moment. And you can see what Swoop just did there. They stole away the blue buff when Tyr had to recall and the balls on the backside as well. So Tyr yeah, had a big detriment here, not going to have his blue. And with Thor lurking in the wings here, we'll see if the Mollus can find anything on this Tyr. He's going to fail us in. The double tap does end up connecting, but it's not a lot of damage as he was hoping for, I feel. With that minion wave there, though, Bologna won't continue the chase. Corvey barely escaping that one. Mollusk going to soak up a little bit of experience, and he's got Boots 3 online, probably going to go into the Oten's Wrath uh, shortly here. Tell you what's worrying, Isis in the mid lane just finished Doom Up and Boots 1 as well. So her damage is going to start escalating very, very quickly. At four and a, less than four and a half minutes in, that Doom Up online means that keep an eye on the Isis because those Spirit Balls are really going to start to hurt early. You can see 1,500 gold lead already, 2,600 in experience, and the experience is what's most detrimental to me. The fact that, you know, these players are a couple levels behind against such a high aggro early game team comp of, of Thor Isis, it gets really worrying for Anixia. And just this Apollo is keeping the Chiron at bay. And Chiron is a god that you really want to control the lane. And if he's getting out pressured by an Apollo who's going to be able to free rotate, it, it just makes everything worse. Because right now, when you get behind early in the jungle and mid, you need one of your side lanes to be That's even true. or get ahead. And right now, both side lanes for Anixia are losing. Well, duo lane at the moment, though, is actually even an experience with the Apollo. The big reason that is eaten by Bear. The support has done the right thing and left the lane to allow his Haunter to stay even with Apollo. Even though they lost the pigs and the pressure, he's doing a good job of trying to keep track. He's actually gone into Traveler's Shoe, so wants the bonus movement speed when he's out of combat. A little bit of extra gold, too, which a lot of people underestimate, that that gold will escalate, especially because he's not buying Active 2. It could technically rush his build a little bit more, but he will lose cooldown reduction off it. It's it's an interesting decision. We'll have to see if it works out for him. Um, I don't think it's the worst thing, especially considering that Athena's behind. He doesn't really need the cooldown reduction. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's trying to be aggressive and force taunts as much as he can. I, I think especially with how the game's gone so far, Swoop have been the dominant factor here. You can see Mollus taking away the pigs on the left-hand side once again, putting out some pressure. And Nixia here have to just sit back and let this pressure just weather the storm for now, trying not to drop too much until their mid-game really hits. Look at this base. This Isis just sitting around the corner trying to pierce someone, trying to bait 
uh, the Athena or the Alquang to push up in the mid lane. But uh, so far, Anixia have just been sitting under tower, and Soup recognizes it. Yep. They've done a great job of stealing away as much jungle as they can on cooldown, and it looks like the team's trying to force something in the right-hand side. They're looking towards the blue buff again, potentially, or trying to catch somebody on a rotation for farm in the back. If they can keep denying this jungle as much, the lead will continue to escalate. And Thor, well, the Molossi is having free roam of the enemy jungle now because there's not a lot Alquan can do here. I mean, if the Nixie are just going to sit under tower, the intelligent thing to do is not tower dive. Don't force yourself into a bad spot. Make sure you can just expand the lead for what they're going to give to you. And right there, he's not going to commit to the tier. He just stops his back and makes it a little bit more awkward for him. Tears teleport is up, though, so it's not going to be too detrimental to him as this does allow the Alquang to pick up at least one of his buffs. Did he get the blue there? Nope. Nope, he didn't. Goes over to Geb. They give it the support, which I really like. It's very underestimated to give that to the support to allow him to stay in lane a little bit longer, spam those abilities a little bit more. You do run out of uh, mana very quickly, especially on Geb, who you have three abilities that you can use quite frequently. Well, one of the things that a lot of people underestimate is how Han got a second Thor's in the sky here. His balloons made a rotation. Took a little bit of poke, but will the Thor come down? Looking for the pick up to Athena. Good knock up. Followed by a wall and a silence of the great chain of CC to pick up the Athena and make it 3-0. My favorite part of that is how the Geb actually rolled out. And a lot of times you don't want to force the knockout. Actually, one more shot on left-hand side. Enough. Masterful shot. Doesn't look like it's going to be off cooldown in time. Back here. I don't think he's going to have enough damage to really secure this in his own. And I'm pretty much expecting Kyron just to turn I think and potentially kill fight this. No, I don't think so. Oh, but it's going to be cool there. Yes, he can. There's... The big purification coming out. Athena's still there, but the protection's not enough to keep him alive. But Alquan, can he find the killing response? No mana, but the meditation bait is still there. It doesn't even matter. The Alquan's not going to find it anyway. And with the rotation from Isis, he's going to be slowed. No invisibility for him. Water Illusion is not available, and it's not going to be up in time either. Berserker's Barrage. The Mollusk finds himself the fourth kill. Mid lane, though. Kronos just had to rewind, I believe. And he's looking for pressure on Apollo, but Apollo finds the kill himself. Fano getting credit for that one. This is getting out of control here. Swoop, a start to go off in every lane. I mean, this is out of control. The tier is the only one who's not behind right now, and technically he's been getting pressured. Every time we take a peer into that lane, he's lower health, he's more towards his tower, and the fact that he hasn't been able to be a factor is really worrying for Anixia here. And gonna uh, poke Corby a little bit here, but I mean, Corby doesn't even care. I mean, there's a potential chance for a kill there. He could have potentially turned that one around and gone for the all-in tier, but I think he played the, the better, safer side option here, just in case there was an extra rotation coming out. He's just trying to farm and keep himself in it. But only needs to watch yourself here. But with Thor in the wings heading around here as well, he should get some support. I, I don't know exactly. Was that I, um, a complete... I am... Um, complete bait? bait? Um, so the tier's going to fall in response. Clearly, Corby knew he was suiciding to bait for the mollusk. No, no, clearly he did he, not know uh, he was suiciding. I'm, look, I'm trying to save him here. Do look, not save him. I, I, he ulted the minion <laughs> wave with Bologna and then died for it, thinking that he'd back to him, trying to push it out as quick as he could, and he paid the iron price. <laughs> the iron price? Well, it is. You the did iron too. Price. Look at your hand. I, I mean, no, that's the, the, fire the viewers can't see. Oh, man. Um, so, right now, swoop up 7 1. Uh, Anixia's one kill basically gifted. G like completely gifted. Completely gifted. Corby felt bad. He's like, we're waiting a little bit too hard. Let, may, maybe let the tier guys, get ahead. Guys, let me feed the tier. <laughs> of all the guns to feed guys. I don't know me, what to say about that, man. He ulted a minion wave on Bologna. He tried to in the jungle, though. The mighty jungle. Kronos is in trouble. Purification used. It avoids the shockwave knockup, but still being chased down. Alquan got to try and help out with a very good slow, but purification to remove it. Tear is here, but a fantastic <laughs> double tap from the Mollus. The taunt is good, but it's not enough to stop Swoop from picking up the kill and escaping, for the most part, with the lives. Corvi, going to be uh, frontline battling tier there. Blue buff going to be stolen away in the meantime and uh, tier not going to be able to secure that one and it's just looking so hard for Anixia. They haven't got a blue buff in forever and Tears now tier stunned. Now double tap going to connect. That's I think Good we've ball. seen him hit Every single one. Lawbringer is available, but he's not going to be able to get over the wall in time. Very, Athena very finds good. a four-man taunt, but just no one else there. Yeah, it was a very good cataclysm actually coming out there. But Ooh. Thor's going up here. Mollusk wants more blood. Has he spotted the Alquang? Alquang hugging the wall, gets away from the stun. Thor now realizes where he was, and very unfortunate to miss that one. But a good play from Alquang to hug the wall to not provide vision. I, I really like that play, unfortunately for him. Or unfortunately for the Mollusk, he can't snipe him out. Left-hand oh. side, though, Apollo and Chiron battling it out. And the Mollusk, he's, he's not plays. missing a single hammer tap yet. I, have, I don't think I've seen him miss a hammer tap. No, Mo Molith is making really good plays this game so far as well. He's rotating all over the map. He's still stealing away the jungle. He's farmed their jungle, I want to say, more than he's farmed his own. Now they can look for the goal for you, the first one of the game at 10 minutes in, and Swoop are in full dominant control, heading towards the semifinals here. 5,700 gold in the lead, about to be uh, expanded to nearly 7,000. And the thing for me is, 
I really liked Swoop's decision, right? They they already had the pressure in every single lane. They had the better team comp for forcing early gold furies with the Isis, but they didn't force it too early. They made sure not only did they have a lead in the lane, but they expanded those leads, forced players back, and then took the free Gold Fury when Nixia had zero chance to contest. There was no chance that Nixia could have stolen that away. In the jungle again, we can see Athena get collapsed on. Meanwhile, Thor is already in the sky, looking to potentially come down on someone, but who is going to be? It's going to be Al Kwong on the backside. But Al Kwong used the purification, now gets hit by the wall. The wall is actually stopping Geb from getting in there. He does get the armor off, but no, the meditation I pays off for Geb. And we'll see Thor survive. But how long will Al Kwong is the question? Long enough, maybe, but Apollo is on the rotation in, looking for him. Need a couple One of more. hands. Actually, two more autos should finish that off. And the Mez not in time, but it's going to be left syndrome. Finds the shockwave, long range shockwave to finish that one off. Kronos, the only player left uh, over here, but actually it's here over the wall, but he was nowhere near anyone with that Lawbringer. But the silence stopped the Fearless Chain from coming off as well. He's trying to return damage to with Kronos in support, but it looks like Apollo's still going to survive, and Kronos has to rewind. Oh, oh, no, he oh, will not triple. rewind. Triple kill goes over to Mexiati in the mid lane on that Isis. Such fantastic synergy and teamwork coming out from Swoop. The shields, the knockups, the CC chain to cancel out the Fearless. I mean, right now Swoop is looking so confident as a team. Not only are their individuals hitting their abilities, but they're playing around one another. The tier, unfortunately, Lawbringers, but was not close enough to immediately get that Fearless chain off. Uh, maybe he could have turned something. And right now, 16-1 in kills. I mean, 8,000 gold lead. This game is essentially over. It's almost done at the moment. And the big key here for me is we said this at the beginning of the game. It's season three meta where everyone's trying to learn these new gods and understand how they're going to synergize together because they're strong against people that have established themselves on season two, season one gods for the most part here. And it's made it work well for the swoop. I wonder if other teams can try and make it more impactful with that god selection that Anixir Esports came in with. Alquan going to fall under the tower. Thor takes to the sky. His tier rotated in, and Corvi's just going to sit on this tier one tower. And it's actually oh. Mollusk lands on uh, Kronos here in the jungle, Misses but the Kronos is going to miss the time stop, and uh, Mollusk will escape, but he's actually baited them oh. into a bad spot. Isis around the back, the purification piece, but good rewind does go off from the Chrono, so he's going to save your life for now. But how much damage has he got to look for the Isis? Isis using a very good wing gust. Snarf there on the crying run, trying to get some damage out, but has to get away. Meanwhile, on the backside, you can see Chrono still trying to get damage off, but a good shield from Lessie Syndrome is going to allow Isis to continue to chase with the wing gust and will find the kill, making it 18 to 1. In the meantime, Thor teleports back in here, and the Geb's surrounded by three, but he's got an assist. There comes the silence. Nice spear ball. Chiron actually doing a lot of damage, but with the oh, circle protection down, a lot of that will be healed back up. And Corvi, his ultimate's already back up, and he'll find Snarf in the back line. There's the execute. No meditation available this time. And now it looks like Blue Squad might be able to get something rolling oh, as Athena is able to lock rolling. down left syndrome. You say that, but tier one time on the right falls to Thor while this is going on. Meanwhile, Apollo is split pushing and going to get a tier two in the left hand side this may have looked messy from swoop but it was all calculated because they managed to get two towers out of this a tier one and a tier two their gold lead increases and now the apollo is actually alting over to help finish off the tier there's long bringer but i don't think he's going to be able to escape in time al kong actually coming back after healing up and immediately forced out water illusion going to save him for now but yeah two tier tower two towers on the left hand side the tier two being sieged in the mid lane it's Athena it's and Kronos back in here. Time stop does connect, and Apollo in a bit of pressure there, but messes out nicely. Bologna's bludgeon misses on the tier. Otherwise, he would have found the kill there, tier getting out with the Fearless just in time. Mollusk is around the side and just kind of had the back harpies, would you believe? And now working on the red buff already as the team of Anixia has to head there. They see the red buff is being done. Can they stop Thor? Oh, that's no, dangerous. he gets the oh, buff man. and he gets out. That was crazy. The Mollusk throwing his hammer and then ulting immediately, knowing it's going to be a he time. And actually lands back down. His team is here, he but he will fall to Oswald. Okay, this is just overconfidence now. Eagles rally comes out. Chiron in trouble again. Bludgeon misses though. Gonna get a bit of sustain off that, but still Covey with the Scourge will secure it on the backside. Kronos fighting up against Apollo, who's in a bit of trouble here, but the damage is being missed by Kronos. And Apollo could try and turn this one around, especially with Isis in tow. One Spirit Ball will be enough. No, it misses, but the Wing Gust is there. The Wing Gust is gonna get taunted out, and Kronos survives and picks up a kill. Circle protection. Kronos trying to kite around the boars, but Left Syndrome finds it with a knockup, and here comes Athena ulting on top. Oh, but Tyr actually dashes through. Athena, excuse me, through Isis, and now it's just overconfidence, like you said, from Swoop. It's been so sloppy. Wallbringer over the top. Get Shield still activated. Can he find the Fearless? Yes, it can. And 
Questify will find Isis, and here comes the Gold Fury swooping back down. There's been, remember when they took the Gold Fury? That yeah. was actually five minutes ago. It was, it feels like it's been forever, but at the same time, it's been very quick. I love what Geb's doing though. Geb's trying to stop them from backing so they can try and rush down the Gold Fury, allow his team to respawn here. It's taking a long time for him to bring down Geb, and that's why he hung around. Is he trying to get the enhance for the kill here on the Athena? He gets the shield. What? Geb, the monster we need. He's going to look after for the next one. He can't though, but guess what? He's got support. Bologna is back. And he actually knocks Chiron back into the lane. The ult is forced in. For this. Here's Al Kuang. One more Good hit. Shield. Water Illusion not going to be enough. Corvi can't body block that. And now it's three on one. Kronos will get the stun. No. Good ult. Eagles rally in place. But I mean, this is. All right. This is sloppy, right? Swoop, have, is. Swoop is so far ahead, but they are just kind of playing this like but they have, I don't know. This is an experience of Swoop here. Swoop have this game in the bag, but instead of looking to end it, they're trying to have fun with it a little bit more. They're looking to make cool plays for the stream more than likely, and that's going to be a bit of a detriment because it's allowing the next eSports a bit of time back in it. It's not enough to like lose the game just yet, but it could get that way if this keeps happening. It, the gold lead already uh, has been reduced by about 1,500, and now this gold fury will be contested. Uh, Nice knockup to cancel the bludgeon, but this gold theory not going to be as free as the last one. Not Swoop, the moment. Still trying to force it though. Tier is on the right hand side, dealing with Thor to try and stop him pushing for the tier two tower. Has teleport available there, so it's not all doom and gloom as Bologna is on this side of the map for now. But he looks like he's going to lose his balls again. It's Questify on this tier. There's not a whole lot he can do about that against a level 18 Thor to the 14 solo lane. That is tier. Please don't land on the tier. He's got ult, and he's just healed himself. I'm, I'm it's not going to be that the easy. Knowing what the Mollusk has done, he will land on someone here. No, he actually plays it safe, goes to the mid Harpies. The first uh, intelligent Thor ult when he's in a bad spot. But in the meantime, yep. there was a huge rotation from Anixia to stop that left-hand side. Gold Fury started up, and here's Chiron and Athena trying to stop it. Circle protection swoop get will it. get it. And now it's Athena who's going to die, and in tow, which may actually see Chiron fall as well. Does charge away, but being chased down by the roller, and Apollo is in the sky looking for it as well. Knock-up hits, but there's Apollo to secure it. Therno picks that one up on the backside. Rewind goes off from Kronos after him going aggressive looking for the kill. Doesn't find anything, and now he's going to deal with Kavi, who's all in his face. Corby going to... Uh, Eagles rally in place. There's Sanctuary, but surrounded by four. Nowhere to go. It's going to be the Isis who finds her eighth Tear. kill of the match. And now Tyr was battling Fierno on the side. There's the Lawbringer, but the last auto and so beautiful will finish it off. And now 26 kills on the board for Swoop. Eight for Anixia and an 11,000 gold lead. But with so many players down, and it looks like Swoop finally going to group as a team and take down this mid-tier and two. And the big key here is 24,000 experience advantage. Look at the level difference on your side. 17 versus 14, 13 versus 18, 18 versus 13, 10 versus 16 on supports. And then the Hunters, well, that's 18 versus 13 as well. It's like five I mean, levels. you saw the Geb. He was 2v1-ing, and yep. he got a kill on Athena. And he got a kill. That's, that's, that's when it's like real bad. When, you know life's bad. when the Geb is auto attacking an Athena to death and secures the kill against two players. And I do like the look of Swoop today. Swoop are looking very, very strong here. They've played to their strengths. They've worked on their teamwork is the big thing here. And Mollusk, from the beginning, has been putting the pressure on this team. Can they find the end? Corvi going to ult in place, not find anyone, but it's going to be the Mollusk on top of Oswald. Can he get the rewind off in time? Doesn't look like it is. There's a Mollusk's ninth kill. Now Athena caught on the wrong side of the map. Can't make her way back to the base. Circled and surrounded by three. The Mollusk finds a double. Tier 2 is down on the right-hand side, and now only the Phoenixes remain for Swoop. Only the Phoenixes remain. Five Giant still stands, though, but will they even need to go for it? Wall Double tap does not connect from Mollusk, though, but that zone off will help a little bit for him to get some more pressure down on this Phoenix. Tear is there with a good Fearless, but it was only on Geb. Now he's taking a lot of poke from the Silence. He'll fall to Kovi and the Scourge, and now it looks like we're going to see Yao Kuang try and rush away from the danger as well with the So Beautiful. You can see Geb rolling out, trying to find the last kill. No one else is with him. He's actually going to knock Yao Kuang back into the base, but it doesn't matter he's doing because in the though. meantime, Swoop finds the mid Phoenix, and now... All five player, all four players left of Anixia are going to try and defend this last Phoenix. Lazy back nice from Geb, Here's though. some follow-up. Very lazy back from Geb. He's in a lot of trouble here. He will get executed. He even got the meditation off, but it didn't matter. Now we're going to see a potential turnaround, but Moloch's Berserker Barrage damage is wrecking face. Snarf falls down to Mexiety on that Isis. And on the back side, you can see Kronos good for the rewind, but the detonation of Circle Protection secures the kill for the double. That's going to be a double. And now Corby just going to be fighting the Titan one-on-one. -on -one. There's three other players behind him. I don't know if Swoop can dive into this yet. They don't have any fire minion waves, and I, I, I think, think we'll Swoop recognize that. They're going to back off for now. I think we'll see them look to go back to base. Let's just check a golden hand here of what the Swoop has now after that little engagement. 3,200 from Isis. Well, I want to say 1,600 gold lead. 30,000. That actually might be the biggest experience lead I've ever seen in this competitive game. 30k? I think that's the biggest experience lead we've ever seen. I've seen 20ks. 
I've seen like 25 k's, but, but 30k? And that's 20 minutes in the game too. That's over a thousand experience a minute. So it's, it's 1500 experience a minute advantage. That's it's crazy. Incredible. The Kronos has died 10 times. But Kronos has been focused since level one. He got picked on the ra rotation from those imps all the way back to mid lane. And since then, he's been focused. He hit level four very late. Fearless Jane coming out though from Questify, trying to make something happen. Mollusk is so tanky and with that bulwark, that's just gonna make turn around. That, oh, that's okay, actually man. his only defensive item. It's just pure levels at this point. The fact that his yep. base health has it is, you know, six levels above the next highest player on Anixia, it's just so hard to fight into, even though the tier has been putting out a decent amount of damage. Can we actually see damage? I feel like he's probably done the most for his team. Yeah, 13,000 for him. He's actually incredibly close to Corvi uh, and to the Mollusk, but it's just he can't do it by himself. No, he can't do it by himself. There's only so much he can do it. And he gets shields and purification all day as well. The rest of his team are arm forcing those purifications. It makes it very difficult for him. The Fire Giant has been started by Swoop finally. He shouldn't take too long for him to really bring this down. You can see Bologna is on Zoom and duty, but Athena is here to try and do what she can, but she's still only level 11. Al Kuang's here, there's circle protection. And honestly, Swoop, I don't think the circle will finish it. They haven't done enough damage to stack it up. It oh. will actually, and Swoop finds that. Water yes. illusion and Kwong in trouble now because the illusion is down. But Thor went onto mid lane looking for the Athena instead. Meanwhile, Fearless Chain hits onto Kavi, but he's not really that worried about. It. He's very tanky. His tear does fall before he can even get the Fearless off to get away from that engagement. Chiron, Al Kwong, and Kronos retreat into the Titan, which is the last thing really standing between Swoop and a place in the semifinals. Four members of Anixia and one Phoenix remain before Swoop finds their way in. And here they go. They're not even going to actually. Okay. I don't think they know whether they want to just dive in or get the last Phoenix, and it looks like it's going to be the last Phoenix from three players while Thor zones out. Isis and Apollo are going to be swinging onto this one. In the meantime, Corvi just doing so much poke damage, and now these fire minions, they're coming through. Double tap actually almost kills Kronos in the fountain. Shockwave not going to be enough, and it looks like this will be the end of the game. It looks like we're going to see the end of the game very, very soon as well, so let's actually see if they will bring it down right now. Swoop looking to go into the semifinals. We'll see who they face off against, but 22 minutes in, a dominant performance from them. Oh, maybe not. They're going to poke around for a bit. I hope you all die and lose the game now. <laughs> what if they do? Uh, the knock up, but not in execute range, and Al Kuang will die here. Corby over the top finds the Eagle Rally on three. There's Tyr gonna blinking through, but it's just like there's just not enough damage. No one can get anyone on Swoop even close to low. The Mollusk finds a double kill. He Mollusk takes to the sky, die. and he's actually gonna find kill. Will he find the Quadra kill? No! Finno denies the Quadra kill, so no Penta, so the game should end soon, hopefully, for the love of all that is holy. Please, end the game, and Swoop finally finally moves on to the semi-finals. 23 minutes. That felt like a story. The God, 45 kills. God picks felt like a very big story of tier two versus, sorry, season two versus season three for the most part. Mm -hmm. We saw all the blue, the order team, and Ixia had a very, very good season three comp by the looks of it, but they couldn't execute it as well as the season two guys could. And a lot of that just comes down to the Mollusk um, on Thor, just putting out so much pressure in the jungle mm -hmm. early, finds the kill, and then forces Al Kuang to back at, I think, level three or four. And then in the meantime, Bologna's winning her 1v1 matchup. It's it's not a massive lead, but well, I mean, she, she was she out she pressuring the tier in the lane. We're not going to talk about the, the time she ulted the minion wave. Eagle's rallies were very off most of the game. Yeah, she can't And, do that the, and then game. in the dual lane, right, you have the Chiron Athena versus the Gab Apollo, but you lose the push battle early, get to lane a little bit late, and then start losing your boars. And it's just slight experience leads Completely that true. Swoop did a very good job of abusing. You talk about an experience lead and early game pressure. Well, let's look at the first blood that happened onto Kronos here. Isis and Thor combined on the rotation back to the mid lane. And Kronos was the first casualty of war because of him. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Oh, Al Kuang actually That's leaves true. his Kronos alone. And this is this is the mistake that me trying to make the lazy man rotation. I want to say it wasn't very safe to come this way and they get punished for it heavily It was a good combo from them and a nice double tap in the end by Monster. I actually thought it was an in-hand that picked him up They were very lucky very lucky that they didn't get both killed there and The Al Kuang was super low as well and the Mollusk just perfect mechanics throughout the game So many double taps in the early game a lot of setup it and even just the intelligence to to throw the stun at the red buff Throw the hammer to secure it, and then immediately all he knows the damage from the hammer. The first sway, the the first direction yep. is going to kill it, and then he can just uh, reposition himself. And Mollusk had a pretty good game for himself. Put a lot of pressure out in this game as time went on. Good double taps, good positioning. He was all over the map as well, Adonis. Uh, just every lane, he ganked every, every lane. single lane, I think, except the tier. And even though he didn't gank the tier, what he did was he stole away his blue buff. I mean, that, and that's a good on tier. That was after. Okay, um, this, this, was, this doesn't count. Why does that not count? Because 
He got baited because the tier was like, wait, is this below the series? He just ulted it in the minion wave. It was a kill. Yeah. Anyway, okay. that is them through to the semifinals now. Who they will face is the question. We're going to be bringing the semifinals up next. It's going to be best of threes, and then finals will be best of threes as well. Find out who we're going to be watching after this short break.